It is always a pleasure to interact with the Center for Air Power Studies digital team, the Hawkeye. Yes, multi-domain operations is where the action is. Primacy of aerospace power in any conflict is now well established. Uh, in fact, the armies and navies are wanting to invest much more in air power than their integral tanks, ships, submarines, and other weaponry. Aerospace will thus play a great role in multi-domain operations. War is timeless and ever-changing. Multi-domain operations have a clear origin stemming from the idea that disruptive technologies will change the character of warfare. They are characterized by intense political, economic, informational and military activity that may remain short of war. The makeup of the participants in military conflicts are also broadening. The aircraft, satellites, ships and the ground vehicles collect an abundance of information. Processing, analyzing and using that amount of data is a challenge, especially when you factor in multi levels of security in which those systems operate. This in a sense is the basis of multi domain operations. This relatively new war fighting concept is also called the joint all domain operations. By synchronizing major systems and crucial data sources with simplicity, MDO provides a complete picture of the battle space and empowers war fighters to quickly predict adversaries' next moves and disrupt and overwhelm them with new levels of precision. This requires interoperability solutions with the joint full spectrum architecture using secure communications in a highly contested environment. It also entails joint all domain command and control, intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance. There is a need for combined physical and electromagnetic uh, common operational picture. Artificial intelligence will be utilized to optimize ISR sensor collection. Systems will give advice to the aircraft captain or to ground commander or controller and even autonomously update aircraft routes based on the threats. This will need high performance computing and advanced software and hardware with embedded processing techniques to most efficiently scale to the hundreds of thousands of nodes. Now, multi-domain operations involve surface, uh, marine surface, subsurface, air, space, missile forces, uh, cyber, electronic uh, uh, systems, electronic warfare, electro-optical systems, space, and also select uh, civil government agencies. Now, this uh, joint war fighting concept will bring to bear all firepower, both kinetic and non-kinetic, to help the military regain superiority in a contested, assess-denied uh, environment. Now, MDO are both at tactical and at strategic level and will require special task forces. In fact, Indo-Pacific Command already has a small uh, multi-domain task force and they are planning to have two more task forces. Uh, MDO will be beyond uh, the traditional air and land and air and sea battles. In each domain, aerospace has a huge role. The role and capability of aerospace power in the support of Army and Navy in terms of the normal kinetic uh, effects through close air support, interdiction, etc. are all very well known to all of us. Uh, let me start from the top. Now, space is the ultimate vantage uh, point. Number of satellites being used for C4 ISR are increasing exponentially. Space is uh, much beyond just uh, connectivity and uh, communications. It is for surveillance, uh, battle assessment, command and control, navigation, targeting, and synchronization in time and space. Space-based lasers, uh, electronic warfare can impact air and surface operations. We are looking at small satellites on uh, hot standby and being launched in large numbers from a single launcher or from even uh, an aircraft. Uh, space-based operations have the advantage of ambiguity 
and uh, because the attributability is difficult and ambiguity is key to multi-domain operational activities. Because of its uh, great influence, space is also becoming a battleground. Targeting enemies, say for ISR, will affect their MDO operations. There is a need to create obstacles for the adversary by denying them use of multiple uh, domains on coordinated in a coordinated manner. Now, denial of access to vital satellites could severely affect a commander's planning, decision making, and execution cycle, and could render operations uh, practically ineffective. There is a need to have kinetic and non-kinetic anti-satellite capabilities. Now, space systems have varying degrees of vulnerabilities. Adversaries can deliver effects from EMP through multitude of non-nuclear modes and produce a wide array of outcomes ranging from uh, temporary interference to system destruction. Now, satellites are nearly impossible to hide. They move along predictable paths uh, that can't be changed easily. Uh, adversaries can employ a variety of attack options, including kinetically striking the ground stations, jamming or spoofing uh, links, and using uh, directed energy uh, to dazzle or partially blind the satellite. Now, parasitical microsatellites could also latch on to these satellites and uh, uh, disable them after uh, alter or alter their orbits or hijack the information. Uh, and that is being gathered by it. Like a few other powers, India has already successfully uh, demonstrated uh, the ASAT capability and directed energy weapons and lasers will have a great impact are, and are evolving the world over. Airborne sensors and command and control such as uh, uh, AWNC aircraft or the AVAX, uh, maritime patrol aircraft and the aerostats will help create the battle air space picture. This will also help exercise uh, control on both defensive and offensive assets in the air, on ground and in the sea. There could be airborne platforms to help create uh, secure communications. Airborne synthetic aperture radars and long-range high accurate, accurate sea cameras will support creating the big picture. Now, many fighter aircraft, including with India, carry SAR and electro-optical sensors. Uh, Indian Air Force's C-130J Hercules is a special operations aircraft and we have significant number of these and we also have the C-17 and IL-76. Uh, the Chinook and Mi-17, uh, one we give it significant additional heliborne and special ops uh, capability. The Apache would fly as an airborne escort to such a force. Uh, air Expeditionary task force capabilities have global reach. They provide inter and intra theater mobility. They support special operations. Uh, they help air insertions. They carry out para operations. All these are important for multi domain operations. Now, all aerial platforms can not only go deep into enemy territory but also deliver effects from much larger ranges uh, other than weapons. Air would be very effective to quickly deliver electronic warfare in the TBA and beyond. Uh, Rafal has the Spectra EW suit, uh, Su-30 MKI, Mirage 2000, all of the fighters have the EW suits. Now many air arms have dedicated EW aircraft. We don't have it in the Indian Air Force. Uh, but in the famous uh, Becca Valley operations, Israel had jammed all adversary radars to allow uninhabited airstrikes. Command and control nodes will synthesize through artificial intelligence. Now, AI will help uh, decide the most effective weapon system under the conditions. Uh, effective tools will uh, use pre-fed priorities of targets that might have been previously identified. Uh, imagine transferring data acquired by Su-30 MKI or the Rafal flying past the TBA for an offensive mission across the border. Uh, and transferring for the Indian Army uh, access uh, to uh, the picture uh, that can help them uh, identify the battle damage or even plan future fires. The same would be true for many other sensors across the battlefield and in the air and exchange data. Uh, synthesizing data and making it uh, meaningful for user will be important. AVAX uh, would actually support the Army and Navy uh, in uh, their own battles. 
Unmanned is where the future action is. Herons and searchers have been flying in India for long. Sea guardians are already with the Navy on lease. More will come soon. And during the recent Aero India 2021, we saw a large number of indigenous systems, including the wingman drones uh, that, that have been showcased. Earlier, the Indian Army showcased their drone swarms at the Army Day Parade. They will be used for all types of missions and UAV swarming manned, unmanned teaming will all play great role in uh, multi-domain operations. Each service would require an advanced battle management system connecting sensors and battle management effectors. It would have to be survivable, distributed uh, system of systems, enabling interoperability between dissimilar systems. Each service requires reliable, sustained geospatial and electromagnetic a situational awareness and that also in real-time basis. Uh, it should be uh, able to identify and track a large number of uh, real and covert targets. Uh, Indian Air Force has the Air Force Net and uh, more so the Integrated Air Command and Control System called the IACCS which are a powerful data handling tools uh, both for situational awareness and command and control. Uh, same is true for Army's Akashthir and Navy's Trigun in uh, their own way. Uh, uh, all this uh, needs to be meshed uh, for joint use. The networks between services have to talk. The IACCS uh, being the more powerful tool among the three uh, must be used as a model uh, to integrate the other two systems. Airspace management in MDO will have uh, great dynamics. To some extent, this is already being done. There are procedural and close control methods with large number of UAVs coming in. This needs to be uh, factored in because the total number of airborne platforms is going to increase substantially. The importance of connectivity cannot be underscored. Now, cyber has thus become a domain to protect and also to use for offensive action. Indian government created the uh, first CERT teams uh, and CERT in, in 2004. Uh, in 2013, the National Cyber Security Policy uh, was formulated. Each service created their own CERT teams and then Tri-Services Defense Cyber Agency was established uh, in September 2018. Uh, they are tasked with uh, handling cyber security threats. India clearly attaches seriousness to cyber threats now. The DCA works in close coordination with the National Cyber Security Advisor, uh, which is uh, overseen by the National Security Advisor. That means at the highest levels. Now, Prime Minister Modi, who is driving the Digital India campaign for quick, uh, transparent uh, governance, uh, cautioned that the clouds of bloodless war are hovering over the world. A denial of service attacks to uh, disrupt the economy, uh, distract from the uh, simultaneous uh, maybe military attacks, uh, can create national trauma. Clearly, the nation is sensitive at the highest levels. Now, as of uh, January this year, that is 2020, uh, uh, last uh, year, uh, 4.57 billion people or nearly 60% uh, of the world's population was connected on the internet and there are nearly 1 billion web hosts with over 25 billion pages. The larger the number of users, the higher the risk. The multiple layers of security are needed to ensure system and data integrity. Cyber environment is characterized by interactions at the speed of light much faster than the fastest fighter jet or even the hypersonic weapon. So therefore, any action in cyberspace can be faster and lead to far-reaching uh, uh, geographic effects than any other domain. Uh, there has been a shift uh, from sequential and concentrated operations to continuous and uh, dispersed operations uh, conducted simultaneously in all spheres of confrontation and in remote theaters of uh, military operations. Now, all militaries are hiring cyber warfare experts uh, to defend uh, critical uh, networks and security sensitive information. These experts uh, are normally uh, also from the uh, young civilians. Uh, specific to military and aviation, cyber attacks can support uh, the traditional warfare, uh, tampering with operations of air defenses uh, via cyber means in order to facilitate an air attack. Uh, cyber uh, space can also be used for espionage, propaganda, psyops, 
uh, electronic uh, eavesdropping uh, and the sabotaging uh, military C4I star uh, networks. Now, multi domain operations architecture must operate in a highly contested environment. The spectra dominance, uh, spectrum dominance should uh, provide uh, undetectable communications and a fused uh, common operational picture. In the new security environment, the pace of cyber, directed energy, nanotechnology, robotics, biotechnology advancements is far beyond the normal capacity to predict their effects. Uh, numerous countries are working on high-powered microwave, directed energy, the electronic, uh, electromagnetic pulse, weapons uh, that could destroy uh, electronic systems. Cyber and electronic jamming targets would include ballistic missiles, submarines, aircraft, as well as man-packed systems. Now, militaries are also investing uh, in inexpensive low-powered jammers to inhibit the uh, positioning, navigation, and uh, timing necessary for effective strike operations. On the other hand, advances in technology are improving ability to defend Integrated air defense systems are becoming increasingly resistant to, to electronic suppression by using passive sensors uh, technologies such as the infrared search and track. These technologies are being augmented with surface to uh, surface and air to air missiles that have been uh, that have much uh, farther ranges and are much uh, having much advanced uh, tracking systems. Commanders must understand how to operationally assess the impact of forfeiting some of the systems and employing uh, their other capabilities. Consequently, the military's uh, foundational principle of uh, centralized control and decentralized execution will be forced to shift to a distributed uh, control approach. Uh, jamming of radios and data links will uh, affect long-range fires and aerial engagements. Commanders would have to deal with the the ambiguity and uh, incomplete information yet uh, deliver the results. Now, our neighbor China has uh, consolidated the space and cyber under the strategic support force. Uh, they have dedicated information warfare units to develop uh, viruses and uh, they have hacker armies for round the year operations. Uh, they've been targeting uh, defense uh, programs in USA, Russia and India. China has made the huge investments in emerging technologies with the higher focus on air and space. Uh, China has developed counter space strategy for anti-access anti, uh, and area denial. China plans destroying, uh, damaging, interfering with the enemy's ISR communications and uh, navigation uh, satellites. Very early in its uh, campaign, China combines uh, cyber operations with electronic warfare, anti-satellite attacks informational campaigns and other unconventional tactics and weapons. Uh, they plan to win information wars and India has to factor all this in their plans. High speed communication with low lat latency are important for MDO. Artificial intelligence based cyber weapons riding on 5G are expected to be far more lethal and destructive. All future networks will use 5G uh, there are espionage fears from Chinese equipment. Uh, these need to be factored in all our plans. Uh, now to summarize, the, uh, you know, uh, 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 a, a lot more needs to be done to tackle and detect uh, uh, and to deter the complicit uh, neighbors, China and Pakistan from extreme forms of MDOs and aggression. Uh, there will have to be a change in mindset and it will require appropriate funding. Uh, the multi-domain operation has to be a joint uh, exercise between the armed forces and the government agencies. And aerospace will remain the most uh, important uh, medium. The time to act 